Hey, good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ronan from Reality Forecast, and I'm joined with Liz Cross. And this is a big request of a lot of people. Unfortunately, we're not going to get a deep dive into Nikola Tesla. But how are you this morning, Liz? Uh, great. Thank you. So over on your Patreon, patreon.com forward slash remote viewing and beyond, you give people the opportunity to ask questions of you. And there are some other videos that are posted that aren't live on YouTube. And one of the questions, people had scalar energy questions. And I wondered if we can bring in the energy of Nikola Tesla to ask him some of these viewer questions. Oh, yeah, that that's a great idea. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. How is Nikola Tesla doing? Oh, he's ready to talk. He loves to work. Does he know about scalar energy and how it operates within the human biofield? Yes. Now he's on the other side. He has a full understanding. Okay. Perfect. That's what we're looking for. Hopefully he can help us. Uh, is scalar energy synonymous with a person's energetic field or their biofield? No, no, it's totally different. Have him tell us what scalars are for the benefit of us lay people out here. It's basically a wavelength to transmit information. Okay, so it's like a, a frequency that carries information. Does it have the ability to rewrite our biofield here on Earth? Without being directed, no. Okay. Can we manifest through scalar energy more than is programmed into our energetic blueprint? It's a cleanser. So it, it has to be, you can help facilitate the manifestation through clean, cleaning out. You have to clean out the blockages. Oh, perfect. The next question deals with blockages. How frequently do we need to use this scalar frequency to cleanse our human aura or biofield? I like that question. Um, on a daily basis. And does it have the power to clean out pathogens, out toxins, out years of like eating poorly? It can do whatever you want it to do as long as you direct it. Now, when I say daily, that's the optimum. That doesn't mean that people that use it in intervals, it doesn't work. But he's saying to me, the most optimum is daily use. Now, this is not an endorsement, but there are devices you can buy. Someone said a Spooky 2 amp coil, the Genius Biofeedback. Do these actually work according to Tesla? Some of them, yes. <clears throat> so the Spooky 2, it takes a lot of adjusting, a lot of learning, a lot of like mastery but yes it can work for you can you make your own no i mean can you make your own not unless you're highly skilled in that way okay <laughs> i'm not highly <laughs> skilled in that way so i don't have the technology to ask or the understanding to ask the questions i don't know Right. Uh, is uh, is harnessing this power being withheld from the general population, according to Tesla? Well, a lot of people, you know, say that it doesn't work and a lot of the science. But if you look at any research projects, right, because I've worked in medical research for many years, 
there's always a pro and there's always somebody that comes along and says, no, actually, no. So they just test the theory out in a different way. Um, they're not comfortable with this. All right. Does scalar energy itself have a living consciousness or is each individual effort you make towards it develop a consciousness? Yeah, scalar has a consciousness and you can you can adjust its consciousness. No, that's not right. He's shaking his head no. Okay, what do you mean? You can direct its consciousness to work for you. But its consciousness is pretty open. I mean, it's just kind of waiting to be told what to do. Do you need a device to work with this scalar energy consciousness, or can we do it from our own human shell? You don't need a device, but obviously... So I think we uncovered this before, like there's an ebb and flow in scalar, the natural scalar out there. So one minute it could be really big, the next minute it could be small, whereas a manufactured scalar is a constant stream instead of the natural ebb and flow, like, you know, where there's an abundance and then there's, you know, that that's balanced out. But okay. basically, we're taking electricity and we're taking that form of energy and turning it into scalar energy. So it's a constant stream. Okay, so we can use our own physical body to do it. Uh, someone asked, what is required to collapse scalar or infinite energy into its manifestation form? Scalar. I don't feel like it collapse. We can collapse it. I don't understand what they mean by that. Okay. Uh, you can buy antennas that you can plug into your mobile phone. Uh, they convert an audio file into a healing session or into scalar waves. Are those useful or a waste of money? Those don't work. Yeah, I didn't think they work either. What is able to make our bodies more receptive to uh, scalar healing waves? Opening the chakras. Can Tesla suggest some steps people could use to open those chakras? And do all of them need to be open at the same time? And I don't know enough about chakra opening. Uh, the more that... You know, the more that are open at one time, the more beneficial you can, or the more beneficial it is to receiving the scalar healing, receiving the scalar energy. I'm still intrigued by that question of collapse because as I look at the scalar wave, it doesn't actually collapse. We can't physically collapse it, but what we can do is direct it to work for us. Again, that's the same message that keeps coming through. Do chakras spin? And does the spinning make them more open or less open? Do the chakras spin? Yes, they vibrate, yes. And does making them spin higher? Yes, but the only way you can do that is by lowering your brain waves. Okay. And do theta you know, binaural beats work to do that as well? Yes. Someone asks, is there a method or to measure or deduce how a thick, effective a particular scalar wave effort is for them, like muscle testing or, I don't know, remote viewing that manifestation I mean, you can see post heal, right? So what does that mean? You want to see how effective it was after the scalar has hit the body. 
and you've directed it to do what it's supposed to do, you can measure it in that way. Yes, you can use remote viewing. Yes, you can use muscle testing. Um, you can use meditation if you're able to like go into a hypnotherapeutic state and you're gathering information in that way. So, um, it, but it really needs to be after the event as opposed to before the event. Okay. There are a lot of questions about soundtracks for scalar healing. Can you embed scalar healing within audio tracks or not? Absolutely. Yes, you can. And they also say sometimes they listen to a track four, five times, and then it loses efficacy. Is that a symptom of the scalar? Do you become accustomed to it and need to change it? No, that's resistance. So that that's the body's natural pushback resistance to the healing. It doesn't lose its effectiveness, um, but there's obviously natural resistance there. There are a lot of scalar devices oh. that are expense. Oh, go Sorry, ahead. Let me just add something to that. So would that mean that you need to change it? I mean, yes. Yeah, so changing it in that way uh, introduces the body to a different frequency. And then obviously then the resistance kick. But I would say you need to clear out the resistance. If you come across that, you know, then you need to clear out the resistance and then keep moving forward. Sorry. What was the next question? Uh, what are the best traits to look for when purchasing these types of expensive scalar devices? Like, how can you tell what's going to work and what's a pile of garbage? It's really word of mouth. Um, okay. Yeah. What makes the best devices the most effective in changing our energy fields in positive ways? So what makes them the most effective? Yeah, those high, those great devices. Why do they work? Why do they work? Well, I mean, it has to be a two-pronged approach. Um, first of all, it's it's being able to program different frequencies of scalar. So if it's just one machine emitting one scalar frequency, that's not as effective because everybody is not a one size fits all, but it's also about the intention that you put into it and the direction that you put into it. Um, and also how long you're using it for. Okay. How long you're using it for. That's good. And there's some other questions about the devices. Are there any leaders in this field living and can we know their names or their devices that are recommended by the energy of Tesla? There's in this field. Yeah, there's a lot of leaders, especially I feel in the Buddhist regions that naturally dip into scalar. Uh, they have chants and mantras that they tap into that they use. Those are not published. Those are not something that we can just pull off the internet. Um, but I also feel, what about the spooky two people? Are they, I mean, they're, they're leaders in the field and, uh, you know, not, not really endorsing them, but I would say play around on the Facebook pages and the forums where spooky two, those people are so helpful. Oh my God. They are just, they answer the questions. Uh, it, it's just amazing. They're, they're very responsive. Are there any drawbacks or downsides to using scalar energy? Yes, you become too reliant upon it for your healing. And uh, you then, you know, you get addicted to it. Anything can become an addiction. Okay. So you don't, you're not able to function properly doing daily activities because you're addicted to scalar. I've had some AI 
writing a couple of uh, instructions on how to make them for me. And can the artificial intelligence help to build those on your own? Or should we rely on people that actually make them? I mean, yes, if you're capable, but then you need to make sure that you can measure them. They've been tested to make sure that, you know, uh, to, to in, ensure that you are emitting scalar waves. Can scalar waves and light energy help with people that have autism? Absolutely. Scalar light is used for one eye found to find another. It says, can scalar light be used to send information to a specific person by way of energy transmission? So could you embed like something into a scalar wave and then push it out to somebody else? Would they act on that or would they not? It would be a subconscious pushing, but that's very possible. So I like for want, a oh. sorry, I don't want people like trying to influence with scalar right. waves because that that's not good. Yeah, that would get pushed back to you. I was yeah. thinking more of like a global consciousness effort to try to visualize a certain level of acceptance or critical thinking in in a group of people that aren't necessarily capable of that <laughs> what would that how would that work out would that, it raise them could it elevate their consciousness it can but it would take a long time depending on how big the group is okay uh someone asked can scalar light i think they're confusing scalar light and scalar energy be used by the malefic to transmit malefic messages to the mass population on the 3D Earth plane. I don't know what malefic means, but that's kind of what I was asking about before. Um, it would take a long time. What type of information can you get or what type of healing can you get through scalar energy, according to so Tesla? They're, they're basically asking, can you transfer like bad messages from one place to another using scalar yes but i would be very cautious of doing that because of the karma that will come back on you right yeah i mean eventually that comes back full circle and i wouldn't want to be in the fire line when that one comes back i'm um, sorry what was the second part of that question what type of information can be transmitted and what type of healing can you get using scalar energy and scalar healing? Well, any type of healing um, that you want, as long as it's, you know, the, it's not easy. It's not easy. These machines, you have to work with the programming. You have to do a detox. You then have to change the programming to then, you know, transmit or the healing within you. It, it's an art form. It really is. Um, you can heal just about anything you want to, as long as you make sure that you're doing it properly. Also, it takes a long, it's a process and you have to heal in layers. He's saying to me, so if you're just going in there at the root cause, you know, you can heal that particular bottom layer but it may not have a knock-on effect to the other layers. It's almost like you have to peel in layers, like peeling an onion. You have to heal the outside before you heal the inside. And can we heal all of those using scalar energy, or do we need to rely on other methods as well? Yes, I mean, you can use scalar energy, yes. Someone says, I've done Scalar with Atlantis Scalar because um, it worked in unbelievable ways. Yeah. Does Eric's participation somehow make it more accurate and powerful? Yes, because Eric is giving the information of what needs to be healed and is facilitating that healing. Okay. 
And are there other entities out there that could help you that have the same goodness in their heart that can help direct that energy more efficiently? Well, Tesla. Thank you, Tesla. Does scalar energy live in the quantum field or in the ether, A-E-T-H-E-R? It doesn't live in the quantum field, no. Is it like a quantum field or crystalline grid? No, it exists separate. Where does it live? Can Nikola Tesla tell us? It lives like out in space somewhere. Does it have a color and was it used during the time of Atlantis? Does it have a color? Yes, it does have a very faint sort of purplish color, but it's naked to the human eye. And was it used during the times of Atlantis? Uh, yes, uh, supposedly, yes. Did the original pyramids use scalar energy? No. Did his Wardenclyffe Tower, here I'm going to get a picture of it, use scalar energy? Yes. What was the main effect that Tesla wanted to accomplish with the Wardenclyffe Tower? To be able to send messages, to be able to reach people, to be able to increase and elevate the consciousness. Does he feel like he was intentionally shut down when they figured out that was his intent? Yeah, he was being blocked. How does scalar energy healing work when a healing practitioner uses a script or affirmations to help their client? Does it need to be unique each time, I think is what they're asking? Uh, it needs to be catered, really, to the client. Um, obviously, you need to put some remote viewing on that, which is name, date, date of birth, location, right. time, time. I use zone. templates with every session I do, too, with people, so it's always unique and unique to them. Right. So... And then you have to you have to work in layers. So you have to go in and figure out what the first layer is. Then you go. That's yeah, not a one and done. You definitely have to work at it. Um, it depends. Like some things are one and done that are just on that outer layer. Uh, you know, and it depends upon the script. How deep does the script go? Can scalar healing be used to replace exercise? No. Can it be used to make you a competent medium? Yes and no. Um, how would you use it to be a competent medium? You would have to... separate the brain waves from the consciousness so i feel like the person asking has trouble separating brain waves and consciousness okay uh can it be used to make you a more competent psychic again same principle how about lower high blood pressure it can help, but it can't take care of it on its own. That has to be a multifaceted approach. It has to have like, you know, lifestyle, it, it, eating, exercise. It can help, 
But no, it's not the be all and end all. No. Can it detox you from heavy metals? Can it detox you from heavy metals? Yes. Can it bring in a romantic partner? It can, yes. If that's in the soul contract, yes. But I don't know if you want to interfere with that timing because usually the timing is everything. So right. if you bring forth a romantic partner sooner than what you were supposed to, it may not work out for you because the timing is everything. Are there any final thoughts that Mr. Tesla would like to share with us about how we can use scalar energy? Just that it's a, an energy resource that is rarely tapped into and it's in abundance. You know, there's a lot there to be had uh, that people can use. It sounds like a new course is in the works for us, Liz. <laughs> it sounds so. Uh, listen, if you know how to manipulate it and and direct it where it needs to go, you can do a lot with scalar, right? You can. Now, some of the effects are not permanent because they need a lot of work. You know, you, you're trying to change years and years of programming in, you know, a few short hours or days. So this is a, with every type of healing, it's a process. I don't care if you do an EMDR, talk therapy, uh, CTT, BQH, QHHT, hypnotherapy, whatever it is, shock treatment. It, everything is a process. So, you know, you have to continually tap back into it. Uh, now, sometimes that can be very expensive. There are uh, healers out there and for what they do, and they do a really great job, but that may not fit the budgets of most people. Um, but if you think you're going to buy a spooky too and just start healing people without putting the time and the work and the effort into using it effectively, then you're, you're going to be wasting your money. That's a good advice for everybody else. I've been studying radionics for the last 20 years, and I think that now I'm finally in a position where I can make my own device and use it to help people. Nikola Tesla, thank you so much. Scalar Energy, thanks for joining us. And Liz Cross, thank you for being a bridge to share this information with the populace. Yeah, that's great. So just to let you all know, if you're not on the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash remote viewing and beyond, you are not seeing all the videos. We get a lot of requests from the public. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? We've done it, but they're behind yeah. the Patreon. And Join us for an amazing part two there too on scalar energy. Yes, the yes, that part two. Oh my God, huge. Um, so if you're not on the Patreon, you're not getting all the videos, folks. I'm sorry. And we save the best ones for the Patreon. All right. Thank you so much, Ronan. You're always a fabulous host. Bye, everybody.